Let's talk about a, a consensus four-star point guard uh, dynamic player out of a small town, Gig Harbor, and he's already said that the Gig Harbor small town feel, this uh, resonates with him to be in Corvallis in a true uh, campus and college town. But Ja'Cory McLaughlin is a big time prospect in all sites that you read about. And his recruiting story is very interesting. So I'll just, how did Ja'Cory end up in Oregon State Beaver? It's a pretty long story, isn't it? It is, I'll try to be <laughs> yeah. brief. Um, I know we're thrilled that we have him, but uh, when we got the job in May, uh, he had already committed to Coach Robinson and his staff uh, as a uh, sophomore. And so we obviously picked up the phone um, and tried to reach out. He, he, sorry, I'll back up. He decommitted once there was a coaching change, mm -hmm. before I was hired. He decommitted from Oregon State. So when we got in place, we, we reached out, said that we wanted to have an opportunity to re-recruit him and, and let him get to know this staff. And so right away they drove down and they had, they had joked that it was probably their fifth or sixth visit to Corvallis mm -hmm. and how they love this town because of the college feel yeah. um, and, and its proximity to Tacoma and Gig Harbor mm -hmm. where, where he was from. And, and so we continued that process um, and recruited our tails off and it just ended up that the following fall he committed to the University of Washington. His parents grew up in Seattle, Tacoma. They grew up, you know, loved watching UW. Mm -hmm. So to us, it was, you know, it wasn't a huge surprise. And, and then when you add to the fact, you know, that Coach Romar's a great guy yeah. and done some great things. So after that, we were like, okay, well, you know, we need to change gears. And, and he, without a doubt, he had quickly become our number one point guard for the 2016 class. Mm -hmm. and, and so then we had to change direction uh, when he committed to Washington. Uh, and we had gone to a couple of events where we bumped into him and his family, and it was neat. One time he walked by and just kind of patted me on the shoulder, hey coach. Um, so it was neat that there was a little bit of mutual respect there. Well then, as that season concluded, the spring of last year, um, you know, we had heard that he may be looking to change his mind. And so we, we got word to his high school coach if it indeed happens, let us know. We'd like to get involved. And, and we weren't gonna call he or his family directly until we had heard that. And so sure enough, he decommitted, made it public in, in May uh, of last spring. And so we tried to jump back in. And at some point, it was released, I, I believe, by, by the high school coach that this was his new top list of, of four or five teams and Oregon State wasn't in it. And we didn't panic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and I just think it was, you know, out of six, seven, eight schools, those were the four that, that came out in the, in the story. Um, we didn't call and, and, and cuss out the family at all. We just said, hey, <laughs> yeah. you know, we want to stay involved and we know it's still early. And, and, and the father said, no, we're certainly still interested in Oregon State. So you know, proceed with, with the recruiting process. Uh, and, and, and I just had a, a feeling that, you know, this kid was meant for our program. And so uh, we made him a priority. And I went to every one of his games uh, throughout the month of July. And uh, that, that made an impression. And um, a family had come down another time for an unofficial. And we really just sort of clicked. Uh, and then he quickly boiled that list down to three schools, mm -hmm. um, ourselves, Utah, and Wisconsin, told us very early on that he was going to visit all three. Mm -hmm. um, and we knew we were going to be the first weekend. We wanted to bring him here the first opportunity. And we put a lot of faith that, you know, he was going to visit those other two schools and still remember, you know, the visit that he had here in Corvallis with us. And as it turned out, you know, they stayed true to that. They said, Coach, we're not going to commit to any of these schools until we've taken all three. And then the dad kind of let us in as it went on that we were in really good shape mm -hmm. to, to hang in there. And, and we promised. In fact, we encouraged him to take those visits, knowing that he had committed and decommitted a couple of times. Be sure with yourself sure. this time. We didn't put pressure on him to commit to us on his right. trip here. We said, you go to those other schools. And, and if they do a better job than us, mm -hmm. and you feel like that's a better place for you, I'll still be your biggest fan. And after those three trips, he still felt the, the same amount of love for us that he had kind of throughout the process. I want to talk about his skills as a player in a moment, but a follow-up to that in terms of encouraging him to take the visits. I've heard 
what I would almost consider scary stories about uh, don't visit there or, or we need you to commit now or uh, whatever you do, don't go up there and visit sure. or whatever. <laughs> All kinds of things go on in this competitive, crazy world yeah. of recruiting. But have you generally, Coach, just taken, you need to feel comfortable about this, so go. And yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm a parent as well, and I went through this process with my daughters and, and then my son now. But, but we wanted them to have options if that's what they were looking for. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, my daughter Jocelyn wanted to visit five because she wasn't sure. Ellie, much like Ja'Cory, knew that it was only down to two schools in August before her senior year. So it's different for everybody. But I don't want to try to put the pressure on a young man and his family when they're here. Mm -hmm. They should love you while they're on their visit. Well, we send them home and we want them to love, love us as much two days later. Right. Then, if it makes sense that, and feels right, that, then you know it's sincere. So you know, that's kind of our thought process, whether it be right or wrong. And if we're doing our jobs correctly, then it doesn't matter. We should only look that much better if they go to another place um, and visit if we did our job right. So uh, it's good to know that that's kind of been our formula. And, you know, it doesn't always work, but for the kids that, that we really hope to get, we've got a pretty good uh, rate of closing the deal. How much of your current players and so on helped in this process? For, for example, someone such as Ja'Cory, just to feel, hey, this is home for me, I want to be part of this. No, certainly, they're, they're a big part of the recruiting process, especially when we get them here to campus. Uh, and, and there's really two sides to that. You get, the recruit gets a chance to see and, and, and know the players a little bit to see if that's, you know, who they want to be around for the next four to five years. But then also your players can give you feedback. Um, I rem had recruits in the past at Montana where the players will come back in on a Monday and say, coach, mm -hmm. he's not our kind of guy. Right. He doesn't have his priorities right. And so that helps. Uh, the fact that we, we had this good freshman class, um, you know, again, twofold. It was really exciting to a lot of people that they could jump in next year and be a part of this young group. Mm -hmm. But a lot of other schools were using it against us saying, why do you want to go there? You know, Stevie Thompson can play each guard spot. <laughs> Why would you want to go there and play behind him? Or, you know, he's going to run everything for his, you know, son and coach's right. son. Well, the kids that were worried and bothered by that aren't our kind of guys. Right. And, and Ja'Cory and Ben and Keandre looked at the other way. We'll be joining a team that could have great potential if we, if we can build and come together. So we, we knew they were the right ones. Before we get to Keandre, let's talk about Ja'Cory McLaughlin's skills and what he, what you've seen. You said you saw every one of his games as much as you could. So you've seen a lot of them. What does he bring to the program? Well, probably the most important thing is he comes from an incredible family. I mean, mom and dad have just done a great job. They started having kids early on uh, and have really sacrificed any of their own goals and ambitions for their careers and that sort of thing to give a better life to their kids. I mean, the cohesion in this family is unbelievable. So welcoming, welcoming them to Beaver Nation is, is probably what we're most excited about. Now, in, in specific as a player, uh, he's a guy that can really handle the ball. He's got great length at 6'3", 6'4", athletic. I mean, he was measured with the 40-inch vertical at the Under Armour deal, uh, can shoot it, but he's a pass-first point guard. In the last couple of summers and springs, being out there on the road, he was the one guy that, that we identified as our kind of point guard, looking to distribute, mm -hmm. set up his teammates, and then it's really neat that he can make plays for himself right. and shots when the time calls for it. And he's a willing passer. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of point guards you see these days, they're, they're just trying to get theirs, you know, and he's a guy that we feel like brings the total package. And then defensively, his length, anticipation skills is really going to bode well for our kind of system and what we think we're going to be able to do with the length and athleticism that we're bringing in. 